and quote, the people of Ukraine should have the weapons they need in order to fight back. We should look for ways to help faster, not find reasons why we should be delaying. Gabrielis uh, Landisbergis is the foreign minister of Lithuania. He joins me now uh, from the World Economic Forum in Davos. And I will uh, ask you to uh, just give us a sense of what it is uh, that you will be um, addressing the audience there with what your message is likely to be uh, at this stage. So do you believe some countries are trying to stall sending weapons to Ukraine? Um, and if so, what do you mean by that? Well, first of all, um, I think that we can clearly see that the events in Ukraine, uh, the ho most horrible events, uh, make us send uh, the weapons that Ukrainians need. So at first it was attack on Kiev, then we sent javelins and stingers, then it was Bucha and Irpen uh, when we started sending HIMARS. And now obviously we are seeing Dnipro. Uh, and now the debate about the tanks is uh, finally getting some, getting some fuel. I don't think that's the right, uh, right attitude. Honestly, I don't think that Ukrainian civilians should be paying with their lives in order to get uh, the, the weapons that they need. I think we have to be way more serious about how do we see this war ending. And it has to end in Ukraine by Ukrainians winning the territories that are now currently under Russian occupation. And for that, most of all, they need uh, they need weaponry and all kinds of weaponry. And first and foremost, it's uh, it's tanks, uh, main battle tanks. Um, Germany has them, Britain has them, United States has them, and also long range uh, rocket uh, rockets that could be used in order to um, to push Russia Russian troops out of the occupied territories. You talk to enough um, of your sort of colleagues around Europe to know what the current thinking is. Um, do you believe we're entering a new um, phase in this war? Um, do others in Europe agree? And if so, do you believe the Ukrainians will get what they want at this point? I know you're suggesting they should, but what are they likely to get? And what's holding up the delivery of further military hardware? Well, I think that we, basically the discussion in the West uh, is still about the end of the war. And there are those who believe that uh, maybe a frozen conflict would be uh, suited better, which I completely disagree with that notion. But this notion, this thinking is, I think that the main obstacle uh, for some countries to send, uh, for, for, for sending the weapons that Ukrainians need. And indeed, it, it took a very long time, almost a year now, to get to the point where we actually are discussing uh, discussing sending tanks. And uh, honestly, I would not be extremely surprised if uh, the tank debate would um, would be productive in the sense that the Ukrainians would get their hands on the tanks. Um, I think that we need to make sure that every country that's supporting Ukraine uh, would get to the point and agree on the final uh, final point to how this war should, should end, that we all need to agree on, on the fact that Ukraine needs to win the war, needs to get Russia out of its territories if we want European continent to, uh, to be safe again. And if we want the global security order to get back into what it was before, and for that, Russia needs to lose. And for that, we have to imagine and understand that Ukraine is actually still fighting against a superior force. Therefore, there is no way we can leave them uh, with what, where they are now and with the weapons that they currently have. The Polish Prime Minister today calling on the Germans to do more, to, and I quote him here, to supply all sorts of weapons to Ukraine. Do you believe the Germans should be doing more? Well, honestly, uh, yes, I, I, I concur that there are... Uh, uh, machinery, there are weapons that um, industrial Western powers such as Germany, France and others can still deliver uh, to Ukraine. But there's also a second thing in, in, this, in this story, is that um, a lot of countries have um, already procured uh, German-made tanks. Uh, among those is Finland and then some other Nordic countries and uh, South European countries, and they are willing to send the tanks to, to Ukraine. Uh, so far, they have not got a green light from Berlin. 
And I truly, truly hope that this, uh, this might change as well. And that would reduce the pressure on Germany itself, meaning that maybe they cannot send all the tanks that Ukraine need uh, currently. But with partners that have German tanks, it would be a substantial help to Ukraine. You're in Davos. You're due to speak at the World Economic Forum. How important do you believe uh, that this audience is? And can you just explain further what your message might be or will be? Well, I think it's, it's very important to speak because this is um, a mix of not just politicians, but also business people and non-governmental organizations. And especially when you're talking to business, business people, I, I would believe that they are worried about the instability that started in 2020 with COVID pandemic and now the war. And the message would be, my message would be of how do you get back to the world that was before the war? And again, I would just repeat myself that in order to get back, we all have to do everything it takes to help Ukraine win. That's the only way to get back to, to, to stability. And of course, the world will probably will never be the same as it was before. But if we want to start planning, not just um, yeah, a month in advance, not just a year in advance, but start planning like like we used to in decades. So for that, Ukraine needs to win. And that has to be an objective, not just for politicians and everybody who's attending Davos now. Briefly, let me ask you, do you believe or fear war fatigue amongst European countries at present, perhaps not your own, um, but war fatigue amongst leadership and um, populations um, and potentially a war fatigue uh, in the United States. Uh, we've seen a, a change to the sort of makeup of, of Congress there. How concerned are you? Well, so far, um, all the all the allies stood stood by Ukraine, at least politically. I mean, I wish that practically we could have we should have done more, we could have done more, uh, but we stood by Ukraine. Unfortunately, and the most horrific fact is that it requires, in some cases, a very tragic news coming from, from Ukraine in order to, uh, uh, to push into action, to push us into action, and maybe some, sometimes to push us out of, um, of this fatigue that you're talking about. So Ukraine is truly paying the highest possible price for their independence and for their territorial sovereignty. With that, sir, we're going to leave it there. We were having a few technical issues towards the end of that, but I, I, uh, I know the viewers will have heard uh, the majority of what you said, and uh, your insight and analysis is extremely important. Thank you very much indeed.